Yo guys, welcome back to my channel. If you've not said already, subscribe to the canvas box. If you like the video, do all of those amazing stuff. This is the U Black versus Connor Benton closer look reaction video. Can't wait for this fight. Put it in the comment section below if you, you guys have winning this fight. Is it the bigger guy in Chris Eubank Jr., the guy who's cutting down a couple of pounds, or is it Connor Ben? Is he going to avenge his father's loss and beat uh, Eubank? Put it in the comment section below who you guys have winning the fight. Without further ado, let's get straight into this. Ben's got better, bigger, stronger. And I just watched Eubank's performance against Liam Williams and thought, I think Conor Ben can beat you. I heard someone today say, oh, it's a 50-50 fight. Fight fans, welcome back. It isn't 50-50 to me. You're just talking rubbish to follow off on. Even for a shock of your life, you know that? October 2020. I'm, I'm pumped for this fight, guys. Just just drop a like on the video, because I, I, I don't often repeat it, but for this, for this type of a fight, yeah. I tip my hat to anybody who's got balls enough to jump up two weight classes and fight a dangerous guy. Every time we see it, it gets better. London prepares for a fascinating clash of styles and personalities. Sons of two guys that had two epic wars. I mean, come on, brother. Almost 29 years to the day since their famous fathers attempted to settle irreconcilable differences. I have nothing to say to Nigel. I find a man uh, intolerable in that he's so wild. I have no time for such people. He has no class as far as I see it. Two sons reignite this family feud. Make no mistake, you know, I'm gonna liquidate. Eubank Jr. One unassuming Let's pugilist go. who has stepped out of an eccentric shadow to make his own mark on the boxing landscape. Took it like a man, and I punished him like I said I was gonna do. Um, it was a fun night. Facing a young lion relentlessly dedicated to learning his craft. Destroyer. Primed with his father's ferocious finishing instincts. Any fight I have is an entertaining fight on its own, whoever it is. Next gen Chris Eubank Jr. against Connor the Destroyer Ben. Welcome to a Motivedia presentation. I am pumped for this fight, yo. Let's get straight into this again. That's the stuff of legend right there. Imagine that. Him, you use the same walk-on music, you ping into the ring, and you do those things that your your father did. Come one, come all. Yeah. From the big to the small. Yeah. Look how we do it. Come join the movement. You know the team too strong. 13 years after his father bravely soaked up the cruiserweight bombs of Carl Thompson, the sound of simply the best once again rang around an arena. So Chris Eubank Jr. with a chance to really make an impression here against Kiridas Zonko. Debuting on a Tyson Fury undercard, terrestrial television broadcast Chris U I didn't know that. I didn't know that. I didn't know that he debuted on a, a Fury undercard. Very, very impressive. Um, we're not going to be talking about Fury in this video because, um, yeah, we, we want to keep this a positive video. Let's go. Eubank Jr.'s first foray into the world of professional boxing. Quick hands and just that touch of arrogance that his father had as well. Left elbow. Then he went under the right. And now Sokko is backed up and they're starting to roll. Inheriting the unshakable resistance of his father, Eubank Jr. does things his own way. Working between promoters, scoring fringe world title victories, and sliding into pay-per-view opportunities, Eubank's career has always sat on the cusp of a huge breakthrough. And that's a man who has been saying, Golovkin, 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 bring me the best middleweight on the planet, I will beat him. I'm telling you that this man is going to be better than Floyd Mayweather Jr. Wins over James DeGale and Arthur Abraham were impressive, but against faded versions. Pushing down the stretch against a flagging Billy Joe Saunders. I would do to Chris Eubank Jr. what Kawasaki done to his dad. Play with him. Absolute play with him. He's sh 
I mean, if I couldn't, if I couldn't beat Chris Eubank Jr. in five rounds, I swear my son's life, I'd give up boxing. Saunders clearly ahead on points as we move into. Well, he kind of did that right, right at the moment. Um... Canella did it for well, Anyway, let's carry on. To the sixth. What is Eubank going to do about this? Now he can't to unload. This is more like it from Eubank. Oh, that's a terrific uppercut. Two of them from Eubank. Eubank. He does. Great uppercut. Saunders takes it. Eubank came on too late and suffered a narrow first defeat. Still undefeated. Billy Jones. After overwhelming Yildrim in the WBSS quarterfinal. And a Chris bumped into George Groves, who proved too seasoned over the stretch. Once again competing outside of boxing's linear pathway, Eubank now gets the chance to silence a ready-made rival. He's definitely taking you lightly in this fight, believes he can beat you at 60%. I could not really care less. 60% is what I will be on the night, and 60% will be enough uh, to crush this man. I come alive in the I put a world weight division on notice when I beat Formella. And I keep stronger, my limits the sky. You know, people don't want to pay attention, well, you know, soon they're going to have no choice. Shine if I want to. Ever since he was a young child, boxing has been in Conor Ben's blood. Raised in the heat of Spain, swapping early punches in Australia, Conor soaked up valuable life lessons before entering the ring at 19. I didn't want to fight, and then um, I just saw what talent he had, and um, I said, you got to go for it, mate. Surprisingly dropped by Cedric Paynard, the detractors sneer. I think the only thing I showed in that fight was that I had heart. I don't know what happened tonight. You know, it's, um, it's one of them things you come on and you bounce back stronger. But Ben continued pitching, a weight of expectation laying heavy on his broad shoulders. And I keep getting stronger. Tonight I hope Gradual progression, defeating the likes of Sebastian Formella, Samuel Vargas, and Adrian Granados added credibility yeah look we've, we've made it clear before you know the right steps at the right time this young man would fight anyone now but now's the time to step to that next level Shine if I want to. early detonations of chris algeri and chris van heerden displayed an innate ruthlessness his star rose and reputation grew as a serious fighter in his own right. But I'm seeing improvements in his technique, in his skill set, in his head movement, in his boxing ability. I can see him thinking in there. I can see him trying to set chaps. Desperate to shed the... I agree. Since I hooked on to um, quite a bit, which was a couple of years ago, I, I see a natural progression from him. In fact, I would say he's one of the most improved fighters in the UK in terms of where he was and where he is now i i believe that, that he's improved drastically at every given level um like now he's you could argue top 10 we may squeeze into the top 10 level so and to get into that it's it's, it's a tough ask welterweight is one of the most toughest divisions to become um a, a you know a, what is he world level fighter world level for me is like top 10 or y you have a case to make it to the top 10 so he's a world level fighter and the fact that he's come this far with not a huge amateur experience is a blessing it, it, it's, a, it's a commendable achievement so whatever happens going forward he's done pff, he's done more than what a lot of people expected about that time so gimmick tag Ben set about refining his skills while eliminating glaring weaknesses and enhancing a bequeathed ability to brutally finish opponents. He's got the name, of course, and he's adding some skills. I ain't gonna be shy. I ain't gonna be shy. I ain't gonna hold back. I see an opening. I told you, lot. I'm gonna take it, and I damn well took it. You gotta give him credit for that. 
you got to give credit. Not a lot of people take their chances, and AJ is one of them, you know. Um, but Carter Ben. Now, with 21 wins on his record, the 25-year-old has matured into a more patient pugilist. One of the most improved fighters. Every time we see him, it gets better. Uh, and, and if something goes wrong, he fixes it. Uh, Though small for 147, the next assignment is huge in every sense. Forget the weight. Forget, forget everything else, me jumping up two weights. I think I could be, I'll be you. I do the impossible, impossible. It's fine in Ben fashion. Um, I mean, there's a lot on the line here. Um, definitely, I, it's uh, I can't win this. Two great young fighters who have legends as fathers who gave British boxing the. Uh, two great young fighters, Eddie. Yeah, Chris Eubank Jr. is not young anymore. Let's just let's just say that he's supposed to be at the peak of his powers. He's supposed to be at the his best. Well, you know, his best form. Greatest rivalry we've ever seen. Now rekindled October 8th. Probably the time it comes around, the biggest fight I've ever been involved with in this country. Across 34 fights and 213 rounds, Chris Eubank boasts considerably more championship experience against larger named opponents. I believe Ben is a very good fighter. Um, I just think that the, the boxing IQ and experience for this sort of fight is going to be the decisive point. A comparative learner, Ben has packed in 84 rounds since turning pro in 2016, That's and he has weighed in as light as 138 pounds in the past. I think the Conor Ben certainly punches hard enough to to gain the respect of Chris Eubank Jr. No, you look at look at history, it, it doesn't it doesn't play well. It would be a massive upset, I think, if, if Conor Ben will be a huge underdog going into this fight. The narrative is so strong for this fight. You know, where as soon as... ...the strategy capable of like overcoming these disadvantages. It's not about... It's not about how, how tall you are, or how big you are. It's about how big your art is, and how smart you are. Conor Ben's got both. Located three pounds off the middleweight maximum, a 157 pound catch weight has been agreed. A hefty fine will be imposed for each pound either fighter dares creep above that limit. This is unlikely to be Ben, who operates 10 pounds below. But for a hollowed out Eubank, struggling to rehydrate safely could quickly become. I would say it's. it's unlikely from Conor Ben's standpoint because even though Conor Ben's going up weight class he has to manage that jump and not go out not tip over the scales and you know when you're putting flour or in or, you know on the weighing scale it's very easy to add an extra couple of grams onto the flour so he has to the analogy basically meant that once he's eaten his food over a long period of time he has to make sure that he's not going to go over the scales, not going to touch too close to the wire, if you know what I mean. I'm an issue. Uh, he wants it. He wants it. He's up for it. I don't think he's scared. Um, he really thinks he's going to go out there and knock me out. This is where Ben's 67% KO ratio could be a factor. Many of Eubank's 68% of stoppages were arrived by steady accumulation. Looks as though like we really could see the advice you must have been given, which is be patient. He normally likes to go out there and just swing away, trying to go for the knockout. But we didn't see that this time around. Since seeking the guidance of all-time great Roy Jones Jr., Eubank has produced a lower work. The two fights that that hold on rate and more calculated approach but i know he's gonna land some good shots on Connor. the two fights that you saw there that those back-to-back -back two fights were some of the most driest deadest fights i've seen in a while um who's going to train roy jones uh, not, not roy jones who's going to train chris Ubeck? is it going to be roy is it going to be roy i'm, I'm not too sure put it in the comment section below i'd love to know you yeah. will land some good shots yeah this has stifled his output, which was one of Eubank's best assets. Having competed at super middleweight, 
Eubank will need his additional strength and thudding punch power to grab, lean heavily into clinches, and drain his foe's reserves. This is what my hair looked like before. Listen, I'm gonna lose my hair with the tattoo if you really shit, but let's just carry on. Yeah. The, the, the pain you're gonna experience is if you if you don't get your ass kicked in in the gym, then it's just gonna be too much of a shock to your system when I put it on you on the night. Ben has been hurt at welterweight in the past and mostly matched against non-punchers. Connor himself can crack and will look to test Eubank's inherited chin and punch resistance early on. Uh, I tip my hat to anybody who's got balls enough to go and jump up two weight classes and fight a dangerous guy. Um, so yeah, it's, it's an interesting fight, but again, I, I think it's a fight that Ben can win. It's mad to you think you can walk through me now. You've got to be confident, huh? Ben has matured into a competent boxer puncher, and rather than seeking to swarm Eubank, he will likely stand off and circle the perimeter waiting for openings to explode with his fast combinations. Eubank's esteemed father may yet find a way into his corner. Regardless, Junior is unlikely to languish on the ropes like Chris Algieri did. Can Connor put a dent in a man used to soaking up heavy blows from notably bigger boxers? If I, you know, my, my goal is to fight for a world title within the next year at middleweight. Um, I can't do that if I lose to a fighter like Conor Ben. The fight presents Ben with an opportunity to make a considerable purse. Before resuming his career at 147, warrior reputation enhanced. For Eubank, sustained success in the packed 168 pound ecosystem appears increasingly unlikely. For Conor Ben, it's going to be if he loses an easier path to redemption than it is for Eubank. If Eubank loses, bearing in mind he's the bigger fighter in terms of size, weight, well natural weight, and how close he is to a world title, and in terms of the development of his career, he's but he's a lot more further along in his career. If he loses to Conor Ben, a guy who's shorter than him, both in height and in natural weight, and in experience, and further down the pecking order in terms of um, how far he is or how he's rated amongst the, 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 the world weight scene, it's going to be a tough redemption for Chris Hubert Jr., a really tough one, especially if he wants to become a world champion. Therefore, accepting a fight that will increase his public profile and generate cash is a smart sidestep. I mean, yeah, he knows what bounces the press. I am, um, I'm, I'm, I'm in control. I, you know, it's controlled aggression always. The last time their fathers locked horns, over 40,000 spectators packed inside an arena and millions witnessed the blood and thunder at home. On that occasion, it ended in a stalemate awaiting a trilogy that never arrived. Almost 30 years on, we get to see part three. Two combatants from the next generation will now rekindle a rivalry they were destined to complete. Big up Motor Video. Big up Motor Video on that video. I'm excited for this fight. I'm really, really excited for this fight for me. I'm in the Conor Ben camp, he's a lot more of a serious boxer, he's a lot more dedicated to his craft and he's the one who I'd want in, in terms of if I, I want to invite somebody to boxing and I want them to follow the career and and whether it be young fighter, whether it be an upgrade fighter, I would direct them to a Conor Ben before I do Chris Eubank Jr. In fact Chris Eubank Jr. wouldn't even be a recommendation for anything. Um, apart from how not to conduct your career effectively so this has been a great video subscribe to the channel like put or smash the like button um and yeah i'll see you on the watch along guys i'll see you on the watch along peace from the Philippines, and i'm gonna see you in the next video peace